luxuries we enjoy in our technological age is cheap musical entertainment whenever we want it. In earlier times, only the rich could afford music at home, and then only by bringing into their houses a live orchestra to play the latest hits. That was a nice enough arrangement for the musicians, they were employed, but for the average family it was impossible. By the early 1800s, many ingenious people were trying to replace the human performers with machines. This is an example of one of the most popular solutions to the problem, a cylinder music box. A spring mechanism turns the brass cylinder, and as it turns, these thousands of carefully positioned pins pluck this comb-like assembly playing a short melody. Every revolution plays one tune, and then the cylinder moves to the right, lines up another group of pins, and produces another tune. record player has the advantage that the discs are replaceable. That idea was borrowed from this development of the music box. You can see that a machine like this can't play back a recording. There's no way that a human voice could be heard issuing from a music box. That development was only possible after the great American inventor Thomas Alva Edison invented the phonograph in 1877. And surprisingly, he used the cylinder shape for his records. They're made of wax and were played on a machine like this. Remember, there are no electronics in this machine and the tiny vibrations in the needle are amplified by the megaphone. Right, and if there was no electronics, that means no microphone. So how did they make those early recordings? Like this. Mary had a little lamb. Its fleece was white as snow. And everywhere that Mary went, the lamb was sure to go. It wasn't long before other machines were marketed. In 1890, this one played flat discs. Its inventor, Emil Berliner, called it a gramophone. You might recognise this machine, and then if you don't, perhaps this will help. Back in 1899, Francis Barreau painted his dog Nipper listening to a Berliner gramophone. He called the painting his master's voice. The English branch of the Berliner company bought the painting and used it as a trademark. It was so popular, the company changed its name to his master's voice, HMV. The Teddy Bear Picnic, played by the Edison Symphony Orchestra. <laughs> one of the last mechanical gramophones. It's much more compact because the horn is inside the machine, curled up around the motor, and the amplified sound comes out here. Your parents or grandparents would remember using players like this. In fact, they were manufactured right up until the early 50s. The portables were light and small, so they could be taken on picnics or to the beach. But you had to remember to bring along your own tin of needles, because a new one was required for each three minute record. We hope you've enjoyed hearing and seeing these machines work. I know I did. It's an amazing thing to realise that it's still possible to hear words and music recorded over 80 years ago. We'd like to thank our sound man, Charles Slater. He suggested we do this item and brought along the selection of amazing reproducing machines. And we'll go out with the exciting sounds of bring out those old records. Bye bye from Stop
forte. Oh. 